And in fire mode this morning, the fire in Sela is now burned a thousand acres. It is zero percent contained. Yeah, Alexandra De Leon is live at the scene this morning. Alexandra, how's the fight going on right now? Well, as you guys can see, I'm standing right here on Weenus Road in a field of dry brush, and you can see that fire behind me. And as you've been saying all morning long, Monty, the winds are going to be picking up later today. I'm going to move aside so you guys can see what's going on behind me. Those winds are pretty calm right now, but the wind and this dry brush have been making it really hard to contain that over a thousand acres are burning right now and they're looking at no containment. No structures have been damaged, but many are being threatened by this fire. They're still investigating what this cause may be. I was told recently that the evacuations have been lifted from Collins Road, where most of the homes are threatened. Evacuations are still in place here on Weenus Road, where I'm standing. The Chief of State Patrol, John Batiste, granted state mobilization late last night, which means these firefighters are going to be getting that much needed help and resources from outside of our local area to help them fight this fire. He did tell me that they can expect a lot of help coming throughout the day. And as I said, those heavy winds as well as some of these steep terrains have made it really difficult to get to some of the areas where the fire is burning and have been some of the biggest challenges in fighting this fire. Over 500 people are still without power. I did just see Pacific Power drive through, so I know they are working to try and get that back on. Like I said, over a thousand acres are still burning. We're looking at no containment. No structures have been burned. A couple are being threatened right now. And actually behind me, you guys saw a couple minutes ago, that was burning pretty badly. And right now they're kind of getting a good control of it. So hopefully as long as these winds stay calm, they will get better containment. I will be bringing you guys updates all morning long. I'm here in Sela. I'm Alexander DeLeon for Wake Up Northwest. Thank you, Alexandra. And overnight, some of you have been sending in these pictures of the flames. Take a look at this picture here. We have this first one from Alan Stafford. You can see those flames and a, a lot of these pictures um, show a wide view as well. Dave Biddle sent us this one where you can see the fire line. You can see the smoke and um, ho we're hoping firefighters can get a handle on that today. But we are going to go over to Monty Webb now in the Weather Center to take a look at those winds. Monty, you said they're calm now, but they could pick back up again. Yeah, they'll definitely become gassy once again as we work our way through mid to late morning. Hey, uh, winds right now, you can see the pretty gassy up in uh, the Ellensburg area, Yakima, but let's zoom in, check out Sela. Sela right now, sustained winds five miles an hour. That will help those firefighters as, as they uh, battle that uh, brush fire right now. But here's what's happening with those winds as we move throughout the morning. This is future cast by eight. 845 those winds picking up in Sela to 14 miles an hour and then they'll continue to increase throughout the day by midday early afternoon winds could be gusting in Sela anywhere from 20 to 25 miles an hour and if they don't have control of that fire by then it's going to be really challenging for them to make much headway with those winds picking up we could see winds at times late this afternoon through this evening anywhere from 20 to 30 maybe even gusting as strong as 35 miles an hour Hour until sunset tonight. Now the good news for those firefighters, it looks like overnight tonight through tomorrow morning, those winds should die down and become light and variable. Morgan. Thank you, Monty. And the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife is now saying fire restrictions on agency run lands will go into effect on Friday. This means no fires or campfires are allowed, even if they are in a fire ring. No smoking unless you're in a closed car, truck or RV, and you can't do any welding. Use a chainsaw, a torch with an open flame or use any equipment with internal combustion engines. You also can't drive off developed roads. In fire mode, more resources have been authorized for the Glade 3 fire burning just south of Mabton. Yes, Spokane Fire District 8 posted this video of the flames on their Facebook last night. And Crystal Garcia is actually joining us live at the scene this morning with the latest information. Crystal? 
Well, Morgan and Monty, I just spoke to the fire chief of Yakima County Fire District 7, which is where this fire is burning just south of Mapton, and we have some good news. He told me that the people that were evacuated yesterday are now being let back into their homes. Now, as you can see behind me, there are still some active flames. I'm actually going to step out of the shot to show you guys what that looks like. Now, this fire again started yesterday afternoon, just after 3 p.m. Now, they came out and dealt with a lot of high winds that helped spread this fire. So far, it is said to have burned about 10,000 acres. Again, there were some evacuations at a certain point, but again, firefighters have said that those people are allow being allowed back into their homes. You can see all of that charred land there. Now, one thing they did tell me is that a shed was burnt in the process of this fire. Now, again, as you guys mentioned, they are mobilizing state resources that and the fire chief actually couldn't stay and talk to me because he was going down to Mapton High School, which is where they're all staging to go ahead and talk about their plan of attack for this day. Of course, battling the blaze as far as containment goes, we don't know the containment size. But again, you see those active flames behind me. He told me that this is actually the center portion of the fire. And personally, I saw the flames from I-82 on my way over from the Tri-Cities. So it has burned a large chunk. So if you guys are in the area, you definitely want to stay away and go ahead and let the firefighters do what they do best and go ahead and contain this fire. But that is the latest from here, just south of Mapton. I'll go ahead and send it back to you guys in the studio. It is 647 breaking overnight. The special investigation unit is still gathering more information about an officer involved shooting in West Richland. Yeah, our news team brought you the breaking news first last night. Crystal Garcia is there live this morning. Crystal, what do we know so far? Well, Monty and Morgan, right now what we do know is, yes, in fact, a deputy involved shooting did occur here along the 3700 block of Hazelwood Drive in West Richland. That's because late last night, Benton County Sheriff's deputies and West Richland police responded out here to this neighborhood for a call of a domestic violence incident. When they did arrive, they made contact with the suspect who was involved with this shooting. Now, Benton County Sheriff's deputies, they are the ones who did shoot the suspect involved here. What we do know is we were told from the chief of police with West Richland that the suspect was armed with a weapon. As far as what weapon, we do not know what kind of weapon that person had or how many he had on him. But I did speak to witnesses on scene here who described what they saw. They told me they saw the witness being transported on in an ambulance, uh, taken to the hospital because he did sustain some injuries. Now, that witness also told me that he has spoken to those residents before. He didn't know them very well, but he never expected something like this to happen. Take a listen. Basically, I've met him, met the guy a couple times, you know, asked for some tools and stuff, but seemed like a normal couple. No problems that I noticed. Um, so for them, to me, kind of strange. As far as the woman involved, that is a husband and wife situation. So the wife, police tell me that the wife is okay. She is unharmed. Those deputies and those officers involved with the shooting, they are also okay. Now the investigation is continuing throughout the morning. As you can see behind me, I'll take a step out of the frame just to show you guys a little bit. Um, there is some investigators here on scene. There are markers on the ground. Uh, this investigation is expected to go on throughout the day. At least that is what the chief of police with West Richland tells me. They are expected to stay out here all day long just because they want to make sure that this investigation is thorough and out here investigating is actually the special investigations unit. So West Richland or Benton County sheriffs are not investigating this themselves because obviously they were involved. As far as the situation and the maybe the cause or what weapon things like that other questions that we have this morning those are not expected to be answered until a little bit later and of course we will bring you that information as soon as we get it here on NBC right now and on our website and Facebook pages so you definitely want to stick with us for that for those details but this morning this is the latest that we have I'm Crystal Garcia in West Richland I'll send it back to you guys in the studio for now this is breaking news we are following breaking news this morning. Pasco police officers are looking for a suspect involved in an armed robbery. Crystal Garcia is at the scene this morning. Crystal, what do we know? Well, Monty, what we do know is Pasco police had a pretty busy night. As soon as I arrived on scene, I definitely saw a huge perimeter involving 
Pasco Police Department. This is Officer Ward. He was part of that containment. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me this yeah, no morning. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell people at home what is going on here in this neighborhood? Uh, around 3.30 this morning, we re received a report of an armed robbery here at the Columbia Court Apartments. Um, two males were robbed at gunpoint by a male described as being in dark clothing. Um, we were started to respond to the area. He was last seen running east down Ruby Street here from North 24th. So we set a containment and uh, had our K-9 unit come out and uh, attempted to run a track. We're not, unable to locate him. Um, so we're still going to be actively searching the area and running down any leads that we can come across. And so just so you guys know, as Officer Ward mentioned, we are in the neighborhood of Ruby and 24th. When I got here, I saw the perimeter go all the way down to 19th as well. Can you just describe the boundaries that you guys had at one point? It was a pretty large area you guys had yes. blocked off. Yes, we had uh, officers in the area of 20th and Pearl, um, 20th and Ruby, and then to the north off J Street and also to the south off court. And so I know too that you guys just started clearing the scene. So yes. what are the next steps this morning? Well, we've collected uh, surveillance footage and uh, we're gonna start following some leads of some individuals that we're familiar with and we'll see what we can figure out. And obviously there were two people that were robbed. Is everybody okay? Yeah, everyone's fine. Okay. No one was injured during this. and. Uh, like I said, we'll just keep chasing down whatever leads we have. Definitely. So. What do you want people who maybe live in the area to know? Just if you see anything suspicious, call it in. If you see anybody who's acting suspicious, following you them while they're walking or just lurking in the area, just give us a call so we can come talk to them. Alrighty, thank you so much. Thank you, Officer Ward, for yes. talking to me no this morning. Um, and so yeah, that is the latest from here in this neighborhood. Again, we are off 24th in Ruby right here by Court Avenue, just so people know, um, that is the big intersection here. So 20th and Court is are those big intersections by us as well. And uh, they're clearing the scene, but of course they are still looking for Absolutely. that suspect. That is latest from here in Pasco. I'm Crystal Garcia. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Alexandra. And also trending this morning, Snapchat's new Snap Map location feature is causing some concerns for users. The new feature lets users find the exact location of their friends all the way down to the cross streets. For local police, this is a new feature that's raising red flags because a lot of these users are still kids who are unknowingly making themselves targets, but officers aren't the only ones worried. I think it's kind of creepy because everybody can see where you are and a lot of people don't know how to turn the location off, so it could be dangerous. When you found out about it, did you turn your location off? Yes, right away. <laughs> now Snapchat says you can turn it off by putting yourself into ghost mode, but security experts say parents should still stay up to date on these apps their kids are using. We've talked about this in the newsroom. It's kind of complicated to even get to that point. When you open up your screen, you know, you've done right. this before. You're taking a picture. You have to actually pinch your screen to get the map. And I didn't even know this existed. And then you can hit and go into ghost mode, right. but accessing the map in itself is yeah, confusing. Have, right, and for parents, I mean, you really need to take the time, like the experts say, and uh, see what your kids have on their phone just Definitely. to keep them safe. Yep, I agree. All right, so if you're just waking up and you're scratching your head and you're thinking, what is today? Well, it's July 11th or 7-Eleven. And we all know what that means, especially here in the Tri-Cities. Mm -hmm. It is Slurpee Day at 7-Eleven. Here we go. It's a little frozen. <laughs> yeah, it is. We put it in the freezer. So, uh, mm. Trying to get some. You have a cherry one, right? Yeah, a big old hunk just, just came. Just in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I almost sucked that down into my right lung there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> And this is a Coca-Cola one, my personal favorite flavor. So participating stores nationwide will offer customers a free small Slurpee from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. while supplies last. The company is celebrating their 90th birthday today and plan on giving away an estimated 9 million free Slurpees. And if you've heard, you've probably heard this before if you live in this area. We have one of the stores here right on Clearwater right. that sells the most Slurpees. I, I just find that incredible. But you go into that 7-Eleven and they have a wall of Slurpee. They have the selection. They do. I mean, just about any flavor you want, they probably have it. And today is also a palindrome.
As a okay, matter of fact, and you had to explain long. that to me. Right. So what does that even? So well, where you, did I get the name from? What I, does that even? It it mean well basically it means you write today's date, right? Which is seven eleven seventeen, right? And it's the same forwards or backwards all week long. It's uh, a palindrome as well. Learn times. Yeah, learn something every day.